So yeah, with that all being said, let's get back to some racing as we are now in the skate park. So a recurring theme that I'll be discussing a lot about is, is I still can't get over the graphical elements. Um, and this is all with rasterization versus ray tracing, which I find is even more impressive with the Unreal Engine. Is that, yes, I do have an RTX 2060 Super, but ray tracing isn't on. I don't even think it's like a feature that you can turn on or off in this game. It's just, this is what you get, is your traditional GPU rendering method. And, like, even with the, um, my significant other's, uh, computer and with my guest rig, um, they both have, I want to say they're 1660 Supers or 1660s, I can't remember offhand, um, but even with those, the, this game just looks similarly as impressive and runs as smoothly and, um, the game is just optimized well, which I'm pretty sure hasn't been the case with a lot of previous Hot Wheels games, where it's just, they've been done by, like, these weird third-party developers who have had, like, a handful of, like, apps that they've developed before or something like that, or it's just, like, a really weird previous history. And then they come out with this game, and... You'll see a lot of sim racers play this game, where it's it's that well done, where it's it's actually a lot of people enjoy it. And I'm I didn't think I'd be one to pick up a Hot Wheels game because they've previously been just really bad. But the fact that they were able to you know pick this up and really turn it around, and give a lot of good uh, quality content, I'm just absolutely beyond astounded with. So in some cases, yes, I would have appreciated the fact that if they had, like, a city circuit or something like that, whereas you'd race around buildings and you'd have, like, an asphalt road and that you'd race around and stuff like that, and then you could go up in, in like, the, the hoops or loops or whatever. Um, but I think that kind of takes away from... <laughs> it takes away from the spectacle of Hot Wheels. Is, is being in places that you would least expect and you build these these giant contraptions with your kids or as kids. Um, mainly in like living rooms or kitchens in the backyard or... I'm surprised they don't have a backyard map, but with the amount of DLC that they've, they've got... Oh, apparently somebody just disappeared. That's cool. <laughs> I imagine that they would come back later and add that to you know, as purchasable, purchasable content, and they, I feel like they've got a, if they genuinely take this game and support it for a long time, like for example, Forza Horizon 4, instead of doing EA where they just support the game and add uh, developments and updates, and then after six months they just drop it cold turkey, um, if Hot Wheels does this more than a year, they've got so much DLC that they can add and so many quality of light updates that they can add. Like, again, being able to see what cars you've pre that you currently own uh, when you open up blind boxes or you check the limited time offers or whatever. Um, because I really do find that an annoyance having to go back and double check. But as far as that... Um, I personally haven't tried, like, the track builder, so I don't know. I imagine that people who have used it a lot will be able to say, hey, this could really be improved or could really be optimized. So if you have used the track builder, please comment down below. Tell me your opinions about it or your experiences. I would love to hear about them. Um, but the fact that they included it, I am super excited. Uh, there's a lot of cool, unique tools, and oh, I wouldn't... Eh, I don't know if I'd say tools, but a lot of cool uh, track pieces that they've they've added in this game, like these pseudo bosses, like the um, the spiders, and then like the ghosts in the battle, like the boss battle, and then the tornadoes in the boss battle. Those were really overdone for the boss battles, but I think adding one every now and again would be a really fun quirk uh, to really kind of bring your track alive to make it more than just a couple of loops and a couple of turns and you go upside down for a little bit and then you're done, you know. 
But I'd love to see if they have, like, DLC or updates in the future where they announce, like, new scenes where they have a city or, like, a backyard. I feel like a backyard would be the perfect place, if I'm honest. Um, if they don't have a backyard, like, I'd be insanely sad about it. Or just, like, that's... That's where you see a lot of TikToks or a lot of people who have done, like, they get like a GoPro car and they just go around the house and go out the back window and, you know, have it run through the grass or have it go through tunnels or, you know, sandboxes and all sorts of stuff. It's just, they really needed a backyard in this game. <laughs> but as far as like the physics and that side of things, I, I feel like they're both irritating, yet understandable, if it makes sense. Because you'll just whip your car in a corner, and you'll, like, hit the corner, and you'll just, like, bounce off going flying. Which is, like, as a racing game, it sucks. But when you keep in mind that this game is about Hot Wheels, and, you know, you're driving around. It is not a Hot Wheels game inspired by the cars. You are driving the Hot Wheels cars themselves. So it's like just find amazing that why haven't they done that before they probably have and i'm just forgetting that but they're it's to the point that they are probably modeling the cars after you know their their actual physics where if you hit a wall they'll just send it what car was that oh i think that was uh yeah it was jack uh batman rebirth that's a cool looking car Okay, 70 coins. Ready to race two. What are we sitting at for coins? 710. We got a ways to go. <laughs> uh, let's do something that gets us coins. Yeah. Yeah, that will do. That'll work out fine. I probably should... Ooh. Yeah, I'll have to go back. So I should really honestly... Um, add variety to the cars that I drive. S2000. I'll do Mini Cooper. I did actually try the Mini Cooper before and I enjoyed it. Uh, the only critique that I had was that whenever you'd boost, they had like a bell ringing effect where it's just kind of... I, I don't... They did... The developers did a great job um with the sound effects and all the rest of it. But some of the boost sound effects are a little bit questionable. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that was, but on, on low volume, where most of the game is in the low to mid range, um, to, to have that weird ringing sound going on, um, I wouldn't call it constantly, but insanely frequently when you're driving this vehicle. It gets a little bit irritating at times, but um, it is what it is. But as far as the Mini Cooper, like the handling is, if I was in Synchro, I would have I would have thrown it in the wall back there. So it the car feels slightly more sluggish, but even with that being said, it it handles so much better. And if for those who keen-eyed viewers per se. Um, might have noticed that Synchro has actually got an upgrade or two on it where I actually did use that function to see how it worked out. And I think I got like an extra like two boost meters and increased the speed even more than what it was already at, which is a lot. <laughs> uh, I think it increased like the handling and acceleration as well or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's it's helped. It's helped make an already slightly above average car even that much more faster and since then it's it's just been my personal favorite and I can't really get off of that so the fact that I'm playing another vehicle is kind of a surprise in its own right now I'm like 90% sure that somewhere earlier in this game you've done a time trial on this exact track and that's another one of my critiques is that they really 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 needed to have more people make just a handful more tracks here. Did we get it? Ah, 158. Got a hit for 158. I hit a couple of barriers and didn't hit my boosts right. There was one point where I pressed 
the boost button and then hit a boost. So I could probably do this one or two more times to see if we can get this. Another thing that I was actually going to make comment as well, um, the user interface is actually not bad. Um, I, I'm surprised that more games don't do this, where a lot of the buttons in the menu um, were actually, like, you have to press and hold it, like, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, and I actually do enjoy that, because there are some times where it's like you hit the menu and you, you want to hit restart or something, and you're like, mm, I didn't mean to do it that. So it's like confirming a card selection or um, confirming if you want to restart the race or if you want to sell a vehicle. Oh man, that is a big one. There's once or twice where I actually was starting to hit it, and I'm like, hold on, hold on, no, I don't want to do that. I thought I was selling a duplicate that I had, not the only one that I have. But once I get a lot of the cars that I want, or actually do get one of everything, I think I'll start going through and um, when I've got a good amount of gold that I can just drop when I see the car that I need or a couple of sets of cars I need in the limited offers, um, then I'll really start grinding for getting those uh, straight gears, uh, just being able to get, um, you know, being able to upgrade some of the cars that I use a lot of. I am just doing a horrible lap here, so let's try that again. Whenever they offer the, the boost meter, which seems infrequent, I'm still trying to figure out when it's offered and when it's not, because there's some races at the beginning where they haven't, and I think most time trials they'll include it if it's like point to point or something. It took me like one or two tries to really start understanding what's going on and since then it's been like, it's pretty much always been purples. Ooh, I was gonna lose a little bit of time there. There we go, hit that upper platform. Yeah, this, this, this scar's handling is so good. The synchro would have just thrown it straight off the side. Why don't I play this car more, honestly? <laughs> I wonder if I can cheese this a little bit. Okay, it's kind of hard to cheese it because um, you have to go around the hairpin regardless to hit the checkpoint. There are a couple spots where you'd like be thrown onto the floor and have to do these like really intricate slaloms with entirely cones and it's like really do you really need to be doing that because it's just i want to say that the skyscraper area um was notorious for this where they have a lot of those slaloms and stuff and then you just realize it's like okay so it will the only time when they'll yell at you is if you miss the checkpoint so just aim for the checkpoint and go straight, you know? So I feel like this one's going to be close. I'm going for a 158. I think the end's right there. Oof. Come on. Oh, we might get it. Yep, yeah, we're fine. Maybe slightly too close for comfort. I can't believe I haven't mentioned this yet. Um... The favorite thing about this game, from the fact that the drifting, because they're trying to sell the fact that you are in a Hot Wheels world, the fact that drifting is measured in inches is just hysterical to me. I love it.